Welcome to the first in a series on high power rocketry. The purpose of this series is going to be capturing my entry into high power rockets and hopefully obtaining my level one certification by using the Zephyr kit that I picked up from Apogee Components. And my whole goal of this video series is to show the progress of the building and eventually flying of the Zephyr high power rocket. So this first video is basically just going to be an unboxing video, or should I say unbagging video, <laughs> since it comes in a bag. But I want to capture each element of this step-by-step uh, -step process, again, to include up to getting my level one certification. I've been flying the lower power models. I'm pretty much skipping the mid power rockets. I'm going straight from the low power to the high power. But I want to get this done, and then I can always go back, you know, and, and enjoy all facets of the hobby. But again, this series is to capture the unboxing, building, and flying of a, my first level one high power rocket kit. And again, I went with the Zephyr, which is a great entry level level one certification rocket from Apogee Components. You can find it at, at um, ApogeeRockets.com. It's where I went and found it. Great company, great staff, great support, and great products as well. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and start opening this product and go through it. We'll inventory everything, make sure we got everything we need. And then as we progress through the building uh, series, I will highlight uh, optional components that I bought for it and different little ideas that I'm gonna to try to implement in the building process. So with that, let's go ahead and get this kit opened up and again we'll do an inventory make sure we got everything we need okay let's just start off this end and pull parts out one by one uh, they did a really nice job of packaging up efficiently by using the tubes <laughs> to store everything for the kit which is pretty clever, saves a lot of space that way. And pull out these last few pieces. And the fin set. Okay, so the bag is officially empty. We'll set that aside. And the first thing I want to do is find the instructions that include a parts kit or a parts list. That way we can inventory everything we need. So let's go ahead and start emptying out the, the tubes. All right, so piece by piece, we'll go through it, make sure we got everything on the list. Uh, first thing they bring up is the engine mount tube. That's gonna be this tube right here. Nice thick wall for strong, sturdy support to hold a 38 millimeter rocket motor. Uh, the airframe body tube, this one right here. Again, nice thick wall construction for, for strength and durability. We'll set these in the back as we go through them. And then we've got the other body tube that's got the three fin slots in it. So these slots are for your fins. And then the holes here for your rail buttons. Okay. And then speaking of rail buttons, let's go ahead and cut the little bag open, make sure we got all the small hardware we need. Okay. Here are the rail buttons. Oh, there it is. I was going to say, I only see one, but the other one was caught up in the Kevlar. Okay, so we got the two buttons. We've got the... Well, we'll go through those. So here's the two buttons right there. In fact, I'll put them back in the bag. Then we've got the two 632 by 38 inch flat Phillips machine screws, which will anchor them, the rail buttons, to the, the body. And the well nuts for the rail buttons should be two of those, and there they are. These will be epoxied on the inside of the body tube for the rail buttons. Then it's calling for the four inch thick wall coupler, which is this 
Again, heavy duty, strong coupler, which will hold the body tubes together. Uh, the centering ring, the forward and aft centering ring, which are these two components right here. The fins should be three of them. One, two, three. Very nice laser cut. Um, they're all just identical to one another. Nice, good, straight plywood. Okay. The nose cone itself, right here, check. Uh, the printed parachute, very nice. Very, very good quality Apogee nylon parachute. Almost has a silky feeling to them. I've been using their smaller parachutes on some of my low power rocket kits. Very, very nice quality. But this is a big one. This is a 36 inch. Just imagine that's a full yard diameter parachute. Uh, the 12 by 12 parachute protector. This is from Dynashute. Dino Shoots produces these um, parachute protectors, keep them from getting burned up. Uh, three feet of 300 pound Kevlar, check. The half inch nylon tubular webbing, 150, oh, 150, 15 feet long. Can you imagine 150 foot long? Uh, 15 feet of the orange nylon tubular webbing. Uh, the quarter by 20 eye bolt, check, along with the quarter 20 nut, followed by two one quarter inch flat washers. Those will be for the shock cord mount. And the instruction sheet, which we are holding in our hand, sheet A and sheet B. I'm assuming this would be sheet B, maybe. Two pages of instructions. The face card, which is this gorgeous, beautiful display of the rocket in flight there for the face card. That'll make a nice uh, wall piece in the future. And we've got the Zephyr decals, which are right here. Beautiful vinyl decal set. That'll make the rocket look really sharp. And I should preface by saying I am going to decorate the Zephyr to match the face card. My goal is to have my rocket look just like that. I'm not going to get wild with different colors and different designs. I'm going to stick to the face card design. Uh, down the road, if I end up getting another Zephyr kit, I might customize a little bit with different colors and things. But for now, I want to mimic what's on the face card. And then it calls for a plastic bag. Um, not sure what they mean by plastic bag. Other than the bag it came in, maybe? I'm going to assume it's the bag that it came in. Uh, interesting. I didn't see these. Did I skip these? The rails? I don't remember seeing them on the list. But you do, it does come with the two rails, which gives the perfect distance for the two centering rings. So I will call this good. Everything we need was in the kit. So we're all set for the uh, beginning of the construction. So let's go and uh, end this video now. And the next video will highlight the beginning steps of building the Zephyr. And one more item I want to show real quick before we start the construction as part of this unboxing video is I went ahead and elected to go with a Aeropack motor retainer system instead of just taping the motor on the back. I wanted something a little more solid and rugged to ensure that the motor stays in place during flight and ejection. So I went with Aeropack 38 millimeter RA motor retainer and I want to show this to you real quick and show you how it works. So when we get to the point of installing the motor tube, this will be, you know, within the body tube itself and the aft end sticking out the back of the motor, what we'll do is we're gonna glue this retainer onto the motor tube itself. And then what you do is you slide your motor in and then you just simply screw on the cap and that locks your motor into the motor mount. So great little design. Um, it's gonna keep things clean. Uh, won't have to worry about tape every time, just a nice clean installation of the motor. 
So again, I'm gonna, I elected to go with the motor mount system. Um, not, not too terribly expensive, but worth, worth the price to, to ensure good quality, secure motor mount system. So, all right, with that, let's go ahead and get into the construction. <laughs> 